This chapter seems to be throwing a lot of theorems at us, huh? We're in chapter 11 for polynomial functions at 11.3b. This is complex and irrational roots of the polynomial. And two more theorems. So there's links to the six previous videos for chapter 11 in this description. And we can find all the roots of a polynomial if we're given its degree and several roots. For the quadratic equation, x squared minus 2x plus 2 equals 0, with real coefficients, its roots are 1 plus i and 1 minus i. And the complex roots are conjugates. You remember conjugates, don't you, from chapter 7? The conjugate of x plus 1 is x minus 1. They're like opposites, aren't they? So here's our first theorem. If a polynomial p of x of degree greater than or equal to 1 with real coefficients has a complex number a plus bi as a root, then its conjugate a minus bi is also a root. And complex roots occur in conjugate pairs. We have to have coefficients with real numbers, or there may be a complex root without its conjugate. All right? So when a polynomial has rational numbers for coefficients, certain irrational roots also occur in pairs, which brings us to our next theorem. If p of x is a polynomial with rational coefficients and of degree greater than or equal to 1, then a plus c times the square root of b is a root, and a minus c times the square root of b is a root. And this is where a, b, and c are rational numbers, and the square root of b is irrational. Now, I want you to remember from our previous video, we talked about the fundamental theorem of algebra. We had these two other theorems in the previous video from this one, that every polynomial of degree n greater than 1 with complex coefficients has at least one linear factor. And it led us to this theorem, every polynomial of degree n greater than 1 with complex coefficients can be factored into exactly n linear factors. So keep this one in mind as we cover this next bit of information. So suppose a polynomial of degree 3 with real coefficients has 3 minus 4i and 9 as roots. And we can find all the roots. Now by this theorem, since 3 minus 4i is a root, then 3 plus 4i is also a root. Remember, conjugate pairs. And since the polynomial is of degree 3, there can't be more than 3 roots. Ah, that's that theorem right there, okay? Every polynomial of degree n greater than 1 with complex coefficients can be factored into exactly n linear factors, all right? So, that means the roots are 3 minus 4i, 3 plus 4i, and 9. It's of degree 3. We can't have more than 3 because it's of degree 3, okay? Now suppose a polynomial of degree 6 with rational coefficients has negative 2 plus 5i and a negative i, inverse of i, and 1 minus the square root of 3 is roots. We can find all the roots. We can find the rest of them. And by the first theorem, this one over here about pairs, the conjugates of negative 2 plus 5i and negative i, the inverse of i, are roots as negative 2 minus 5i and i. We also have a link to the video 7.9c about complex conjugates in this description, okay? Now by this second theorem right here, since 1 minus the square root of 3 is a root, then 1 plus the square root of 3 is also a root, all right? And because the polynomial is of degree 6, there's no other roots. We have 6 roots. There can't be more. So here they are. We have negative 2 plus 5i, negative 2 minus 5i, the inverse of i, i, 1 minus the square root 3, and 1 plus the square root of 3. There's our 6, all right? If it's of degree 6, it can't have more than 6, all right? Now let's let p of x equal x to the fourth minus 5x to the third plus 10x squared minus 20x plus 24. We can find all the roots of p of x given that 2i is a root. And since 2i is a root, we know that negative 2i is also a root. And p of x equals x minus 2i times x plus 2i times the q of x for some q of x. It's a quotient. Since x minus 2i times x plus 2i equals x squared plus 4, we write p of x as p of x equals x squared plus 4 times q of x. And by using division, 
we find that q of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. And we can factor this. It becomes p of x equals x squared plus 4 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. So our roots are, we have four of them, because it was to the fourth degree, see? So we can't have more than four. We have 2i, the inverse of 2i, 2, and 3. And remember, because our equation is of degree 4, there can't be more than four roots, all right? So let's rehash this a little bit. The conjugate of 5 plus 7i is 5 minus 7i. The root of p of x equals the square of x minus i is i, is a single root. If one root of the polynomial x squared plus 6x plus 13 is 3 plus 2i, then the other root is 3 minus 2i. Because the coefficients are real and complex roots must exist in conjugate pairs. And the definition, the square root of negative 1 equals i, dis distinguishes the set of complex numbers. We use real component a and an imaginary component bi to make up a complex number in the form of a plus bi or a minus bi. So examples would be like 5 plus 3 or 7 mi minus 2i, all right? So that was all in Chapter 7. And the videos from 7.7a to the end of Chapter 7 discuss i, imaginary numbers, and their conjugates, all right? And the previous videos will be in this description, the six previous videos for Chapter 11, and a link to these Chapter 7 videos. Our next video is 11.3c. We're going to find polynomials with specific roots. Now, if you're looking for conjugate pairs in the Rational Root Theorem and Descartes' Rule of Signs, we're going to cover those in 11.4 and 11.5. So be patient. Stay with me. We're going to get to those. All right? I'm trying to move methodically and slowly here, adding a little bit of information for each video. And I hope you're doing well. It's a gorgeous day outside. I just found out that I have two bird's nests. One there and another one there. This one has sparrows in it and this one has robins in it. And the mother birds have been really busy going back and forth taking care of the, the nests and singing. It's been really nice. I'll see you next video. Bye.